great. We're going to get ahead. We're going to get started. At JFN, we're committed to inclusion. As a pluralistic organization, we value diversity and see opportunities for innovation and learning everywhere. We believe that this matching grant exemplifies this value by striving to create a more welcoming and inclusive Jewish community for anyone who identifies as Jewish. Our presenters today are Maxine Finkelstein, Chief of Staff at the Genesis Prize Foundation. Maxine currently serves as Chief of Staff at the Genesis Prize Foundation, as I just said. Prior to this, she held the positions of Chief Operating Officer of the Birthright Israel Foundation, CEO of the Jewish Agency for Israel North America, and CEO of UIA Federations Canada. In the earlier years of her career, Maxine worked in direct service, community organization, and resource development in the Montreal Jewish community. Prior to leaving Montreal, she served as Executive Director of Federation CJA. Samantha Anderson is also on our call. She is the Senior Director of Member Services at the Jewish Funders Network, where she engages with the network, creating opportunities to cultivate interconnectedness and strengthen the network's impact on the Jewish philanthropic community. She comes to JFN with a deep background in the field of philanthropy and social innovation, including serving as Managing Director of Arabella Advisors, the Program Lead at the Skull World Forum at Oxford University, and the Director of the Yale School of Management and the Goldman Sachs Foundation Partnership on Nonprofit Ventures. I am Melissa Rosen, and as I mentioned at the top of the call, I am the new Program Manager for Matching Grants here at the Jewish Funders Network. I joined JFN in mid-July, and I am thrilled to be working on all aspects of JFN's matching grants initiatives, from working with funders and grantees like yourselves to outreach events and everywhere in between. I came to JFN from UJ Federation of New York, where I spent almost 10 years in the Jewish Communal Network Commission working with the nonprofit organizations in UJ, Fed UJ Federation's network. During this call, we will do a few things. We will introduce you to the Avenues for Jewish Engagement for Intermarried Families Matching Grant Initiative, including the origin of the initiative through the Genesis Prize Foundation. We will review the Matching Grant Initiative details, including timeline, donor organization eligibility, and application process, and Sorry, one second. Um, and we will discuss Jewish Funders Network and the Matching Grants Initiatives as a whole and open up the discussion for Q&A. At this point, though, we are going to hear more about the Genesis Prize from Maxine Finkelstein. Maxine? Maxine, are you there? One second. Maxine, Hello? Are you there? Yep. Okay. I'm great. here. Okay. All right. So um the beauty Sorry, of let technology. Me the slide. Okay. Uh, all right. So um I'm going uh, Melissa, thank you very much. And uh I uh, Melissa had asked me to say a few words about the Genesis Prize and uh how we came to the uh topic that we're working on together uh with uh with Jewish Funders Network, and it's great to be in this partnership together. I want to uh, also mention that um, Sana Bratowski, who is the uh, Deputy CEO of uh, the Genesis Prize Foundation and based in Israel, is on the call along with her te the team that works with us uh, in Israel. And uh, Sana is going to be working on rolling this out together with JFN outside of North America, which is a very important uh, objective because uh, this for us is truly what we hope will be a global initiative and uh, will have impact uh, throughout the Jewish world. Uh, for those who aren't familiar with the Genesis Prize, I, I don't want to take up too much time speaking about it, but I really encourage you to take a look at our website. It will give you a basic overview about the Genesis Prize Foundation, um, our motivations, our vision, and uh, what we're trying to achieve. But very uh, succinctly, uh, the Genesis Prize is, is an incentive award. And last year it was uh, given to, to Michael Bloomberg, the former mayor of New York, 
uh, and who didn't accept the award. Uh, he obviously didn't need it. Uh, and uh, in that year and in, in the past year, the money has gone to teams of young people uh, who are involved in social entrepreneurship and uh, working on initiatives in the spirit of Michael Bloomberg to do better in the world, uh, focused in Jewish values. Uh, and that's what he chose as uh, what he wanted to do. So this is an incentive prize both for the recipient and it's an incentive for the next stage, which is really, uh, in a sense, playing it forward or paying it forward. Uh, this year when Michael Douglas uh, was uh, uh, given the prize, he announced in June at, at the Genesis Prize ceremony uh, that he would like to use the money uh, to engage Jewish families like his own uh, in Jewish life. Michael Douglas, as probably most of you know, uh, has a, uh, a non-Jewish mother who recently passed. Uh, his dad, Kirk Douglas, is Jewish. And um, one of the great things that Michael Douglas said when he was presented with the prize award was that his dad came to really connect with his Judaism strongly when he was 70 years old. Michael Douglas is now 70 years old. And through his son, Dylan, who became Bar Mitzvah last year, uh, he has really started to connect more closely and to understand how important that Jewish connection is to him and his connection with Israel is to him and to his family. Uh, so uh, he said, please use the funds for this. I'll work together with you in doing this. But I want to make sure that many more people are able to have the opportunity I'm having now, but have it at a much younger age. Uh, so we, uh, when we set up the prize, uh, we decided that we were going to uh, also uh, start with what we said was a rollout project, which we're doing uh, with Hillel uh, as an initial uh, uh, program on campus. And uh, Hillel uh, really uh, went out of their way to come up with something very special, which is interns who are working on campus to engage the children of the intermarried. And uh, they had their first training session about two weeks ago, and uh, they're moving along with that in this year. So the rest of the funds are going to be used for this matching grant. We were very fortunate to have a, an additional donor uh, who gave us uh, funds to add, and we're at $1.65 million, which uh, as you can see will generate uh, $3.3 .3 million when matched. Um, as a final word, I, you know, I just want to say, first of all, congratulations to all who have been doing this good work. And additionally, we're looking forward to amazing new creative initiatives that we're going to be able to support through this and have a long-term impact in terms of bringing many more people closer to the opportunities and values in the Jewish community. Okay. Thank you, Maxine. That was fantastic. Um, on to the next. One second. Um, just I want to address a question that somebody that Mandy Wynn asked. The slides will be available after the call. Um, you don't have to frantically write them all down, and the recording will also be available. Um, again, thank you, Maxine, and thank you to your staff at the Genesis Prize Foundation for this really great infographic. We're going to talk through many of the details that are on the screen in the rest of the webinar, but for just a few high points of the, of the infographic. Specific gifts, either played, paid or pledged, will be matched. Organizations can submit more than one application. Applications will be reviewed by representatives of the Genesis Prize Foundation. Um, gifts of tw from $25,000 up to $150,000 will be matched dollar for dollar, and eligible organizations can receive up to $150,000 in matching funds. Those are some of the high points, and we'll get into some of those details in a few minutes. As far as timeline goes, this is where we are. We officially launched the, this initiative on August 31st, just one week ago, the amount of interest, as you can see from the participation on our call, is huge. Um, the deadline for applications is March 15th, 2016. Um, we'll announce those decisions in May. And we will also be holding a number of events 
for funders and organizations, that calendar will go up on our website shortly. So please keep checking, and you'll be able to see all of those events in the next week or so. So now here's what you all are on the call to hear about. What, what makes you eligible? So rather than I am going to read these to you, and that way we'll get all of the information. So organizations and project or projects must meet these requirements. You must, be, you must have a mission to support and enhance avenues to Jewish engagement for intermarried couples, their children, and individuals who come from these families. I got a question today about um, whether the program needs to be explicitly for outreach to intermarried families or if a component of the program could be for engaging intermarried families? And the answer is yes, either of those is okay. Um, your organization must have a minimum three-year history, although your project can be new. You can start a new program and, that is, and apply for funds for that program. We're looking for organizations with an operating budget of at least $100,000 per year and at least one full-time staff member. Um, we do note that while, while we are awarding general operating grants and programmatic grants, we will only be awarding general operating grants to organizations that explicitly work only with this population of intermarried families, children, and individuals from those families. Sorry, having a technical issue. As far as funding goes, we're looking for we're looking for you as organ as applicants to come to the table with a at least one funder in mind. Um, your donors can be either new, meaning they're making their first ever gift to either your organization or this program or they can be existing donors, meaning that they've made a gift to your organization or program in the last five years um, and are increasing their previous gift by at least twofold. The threshold for all gifts is $25,000, and organizations can, can submit an application with at least six donor applicants meaning that you will need to specify each donor separately with their contact information and the amount of money that they've pledged, again, a minimum of $25,000, in, in order for them to be eligible to apply with you, with your organization, my apologies. And the other, the other key point is that every donor, either the norm for this grant initiative is that every donor either will be or already is a JFN member. I see that there's a bunch of questions. Yeah, sorry, thank you, Samantha. If they're based in the United States, we're expecting that the donors become JFN members. I apologize for that. Um, these are the desirability criteria. You, I think you'll find that they're not very different than many other funding opportunities. We're looking for mission alignment. Um, the size of your organization, whether the project is ongoing versus short term. Um, partnerships and collaborations will be key. We're looking for organizations to think creatively and work, and work together to create really excellent programs. And also, do, does your organization have the capacity to absorb and spend your matching funds? Okay, about the application. So this is really important. Um, information submitted by you and your donors will only be available to JFN and the Genesis Prize Foundation. No one else has access to that. All applications must be submitted online in English. Um, or you as organizations will not have access to your donor information. Most Organizations and donors will receive an email from 
me, it'll come from me, um, confirming that your application is under review. And if I need more information, I will contact you directly. And as always, you all can always contact me directly as well. All of my contact information is all over this PowerPoint and website and is will also I'll also give it to you at the very end of this call. Okay, ready to apply. Hopefully you've all been to our microsite. If you haven't, the app the website is intermarriedfamilies-genesisprizematch.org. Everything you ever, will ever need to know about this matching grant initiative is on that website, including a link to the application, a video that walks you through how to apply for this matching grant, all, every FAQ I could possibly think of, but also an opportunity for you to ask other questions that maybe I didn't think of. Um, please, please be in touch with me should you have any questions. Um, I am here and ready to answer all of them. So now I have the pleasure of turning this over to Samantha Anderson, who is going to walk us through more information about JFN. Thank you, Melissa, and thank you to Maxine and the Genesis Prize Foundation for your partnership and collaboration on this initiative. And to all of you on the, on the call today, thanks for tuning in. Um, it's an honor to, uh, to be part of this conversation. It's such an important issue, and JFN is, uh, is delighted to be um, working in partnership uh, alongside all of you. So just by way of background, um, I'm here to give some context, context um, about the Jewish Funders Network. Um, and so uh, here goes. Um, for those who uh, are not familiar, JFN uh, has been around for 25 years. We, we've just celebrated our 25th anniversary. And we are an international organization, a membership organization, dedicated to maximizing the quality and impact of Jewish philanthropy through the power of networking. Um, our members include independent philanthropists, foundation trustees, foundation professionals, and we're a global organization drawing members from all around the world. Membership is open to those who are granting at least $25,000 a year annually uh, to Jewish causes or to broader areas of philanthropy but using a Jewish lens and Jewish values through their giving. And as our network continues to expand globally with nearly 1,500 members, we're, we are strengthening our ties to Jewish philanthropists from all over the world. And uh, as Melissa mentioned, um, the norm is for matching grant donors in the United States to join JFN. So as you're working on your applications, I'm, I'm certain that there will be questions that you'll have about member benefits and you know why uh, why do your donors also need to join JFN and so we're happy to to talk you through those kinds of questions give you talking points and so forth so that you can um, adequately explain that to uh, to your funders but very succinctly the member benefits include um, access to programs throughout the year that we feature on um, a host of topics related to Jewish philanthropy, uh, conference calls, briefings, salons, lunch and learns, et cetera. And you can go to our website, jfunders.org, to see um, the full complement of our upcoming programs. And also I would encourage you to sign up to receive our weekly calendar um, so that you can just kind of stay plugged into what we're up to. Um, you can do that on our home page. And um, you may know also that JFN hosts an annual conference. Uh, we are um, going to be in, back in the United States in 2016. We were in Israel earlier this year. Um, we'll be in San Diego April 3rd through the 5th. Our conferences typically generate you know, 300 to 400 um, philanthropists who just care deeply about Jewish causes, Jewish um, topics, and they come together to learn, to connect, to network with, with one another. Um, we have other benefits that I'm not going to um, 
take a, any more time away from Melissa's conversation and your questions. So please be in touch. Ask any questions you have about membership and how um, your donors can make the most out of this match. So Melissa, back to you. Okay. Thanks, Samantha. I really, we really appreciate that. Okay. So on to really what everybody wants to know, which is how we're going to open this up to Q&A. But because I'm looking at the numbers and I see that there are so many of you on this call, what I'm going to ask you to do is to type your questions into the chat box and I will read them and answer them um, rather than unmute everybody's lines. Um, well, so here we go. <laughs> um, I'm going to start at the top and work my way down. <laughs> um, Yes, we did answer that. The slides will be available. Um, I'm, so here we go. Gordon Silverman's question will – thank you all for the, those of you who have already asked questions, those of you who are typing as we speak, and those of you who are going to ask questions offline. Thank you all. Um, I will get to each and every one of them, and whether I need to take it and respond to you offline or not, I do appreciate all the questions. So Gordon Silverman, will advocacy projects and or organizations be considered? Um, Gordon, that's actually a question that I'm going to take and respond to you offline um, because I don't want to answer you off I, on one leg, as I'm fond of saying. Um, does this mean Toba Auckland, and again, my apologies if I – butcher your name. Um, does this mean that six donors can collectively be giving $25,000 or do they each need to give twenty five? dollars This is a question that I get a bunch. Um, each do if your donors are all in the United States, each donor needs to be giving $25,000 um, for a total of up to $150,000. If you have up to three donors who are all outside of the United States, only then can you pool those gifts. Um, I hope that answered your question. If Toba, if you, ha if someone has a question about that, please continue to type it. Um, Ron Wegsman, can a donor be an existing donor to an organization, but giving for the first time to a new program? Yes, um, a new pro, a donor to a new program would count. We're counting that as a new, as a gift, a new gift. Um, so therefore, the the minimum gift would be twenty five thousand dollars, and we would have a convers. I will have a I would have a conversation with that donor as part of your application. Um, Toba, again, thank you. Um, would a foundation grant also be eligible for the matching funds? Um, I'm going to say that I will get back to you on that one. I just want to make sure that I give you the correct information. Um, Daniel Freelander, tw 25000 at once or over several years. Again, we're going to take that one. I want to make sure that we, that we cover it adequately. Um, Sharon. What if our organization's mission, Sharon Steinbach asks, what if our organization's mission is not to serve interfaith families, but we have a program for interfaith families? Sharon, that, and anybody else with that question, that is actually perfect. Um, we are looking for, pro, we, are, we are definitely looking at programs that serve the intermarried population, and you should definitely write your application with that project in mind. Um, Bridget, if we seek funding for a project that serves Jewish families that are mostly intermarried but not specifically so, um, again, we are definitely looking at projects that include other parts of the community. One of the conversations I had recently was that if we're looking to create welcoming and inclusive communities, that our programs should not be creating further divides than people already feel exist. So your program absolutely can inc include a strategy for engaging the intermarried population you're serving while 
being an engagement program for your community at large. Um, Adina, Adina Rose's question. We have a funder who has multiple funding arms, different foundations. If the foundation hasn't given to us in the past, but the family has given through, to us through a different foundation, the family would be an existing donor. That, but that's totally fine. Um, if your project is new, it be, is, is a new do, is a new gift. Um, Robin Rubenstein. Small organizations in the state of Maine where there are fewer than 9,000 identified Jews and most are intermarried doesn't fit, does it? Robin, I would say that your small inter, that your small organizations should maybe think about um, ways to collaborate together and find other partners in order to qualify, and we can certainly talk about that more offline. Um, Karen Yaskowitz, are there expectations related to breadth of reach? How many people is a success? Is a program acceptable that isn't for interfaith but will serve 60 to 80 percent interfaith? Um, Karen, as I mentioned before, absolutely. That, prog that kind of program would definitely be acceptable. Um, Ellen Greenspan, um, your synagogue would definitely uh, qualify. Um, I, we encourage synagogues to apply. Um, and if you have other questions about that, I'm happy to talk to you at a later date. Um, Al Rubenstein, an organization cannot apply without providing a list of $25,000 donors. It is not the case that organizations apply without submitting matching donors. Is this correct? Yes. When you apply, you must come to the tape. You must come to the application with at least one donor in mind. However. If you apply with only one donor and then are able to secure a second donor, you can contact me directly and we will work that out through the application, but I need to do it on the back end. Um, Sharon Steinbeck, does both organization and the donor need to be JFN members? The donor needs to either be or become a JFN member if they are located in the United States. Um, and again, we can organizations are not members, and we can talk about that more offline if you would like some language. Only funders join JFN. Um, Sadie Rose Stern, can you address the role of synagogues in this type of funding grantee? Okay, Sadie, again, as we said, um, we are encouraging all synagogues to apply or as many synagogues as want to apply and are qualified to apply, they should definitely do that. Synagogues are doing really good work and important work in engaging the intermarried population. And I'm happy to talk to you more if you have specific questions about your synagogue. Um, Ed Case, can you say more about the decision-making process who will be reviewing and making decisions? Um, I wish I could, but I will have to take the question because we are in the process of determining that, how that exactly is going to go. Eileen Primack, will a list be generated as to who is on the call so we can see potential collaborators? Absolutely. Um, Jennifer Hillel, in order to join JFN, does the donor need to contribute an additional 25K for the year directly to JFN? No. There is a um, membership dues for JFN. No. There's, sorry, um, there, no. The answer to your question, Jennifer, is no. I apologize for stuttering. Um, Allison Bonavoglia, would an agency like the JCC be an eligible sized organization. We don't only serve interfaith families, but have a department for interfaith engagement. Um, yes, the JCC is perfectly eligible. Um, and the interfaith, any interfaith, pro you can develop a program, either an existing, either a program you have or a new program to apply for this grant, and that would be totally fine. Um, Charmian, we only have a part time staff person and a rabbi at our synagogue, which will be the group which develops a program needing funding, do we qualify? Um, I think I'm going to take that question, and I think we should talk about it offline a little bit more. Um, 
Mandy. Mandy Wynn, if you plan to fund the program through general operating, can the donor make an unrestricted but designated gift, or do we need to establish a restricted fund? If your program, if you're applying for, prog if you're applying for programmatic support, um, your donor needs to make your gift as designated for that program. Um, it's only if your mission statement is solely to serve the intermarried population that we're looking that we are looking at general operating dollars. Um, if you have more questions about that, please contact me directly. Um, what is the time, Jennifer? Hello. What is the timeline for the donation? Paid after August. The gift needs to be paid by December, December 1, 2016. Um, so back to, right, December 1, 2016, um, but not received before August 31, 2015. So um, back to um, Dan Freelander's question, it could be multi, it could be a multi-year gift as long as it's received the total is received by December 1st, 2016. Um, Carol Schein is prospective donor. Same question about giving to JFN? No. Um, the match is from a Barbara lerman Golub. If the match is from an existing donor, um, I did say they need to at least double their gift. For donors that give multiple gifts, is this based on their most recent gift? It is actually based on um, their largest previous gift. And again, I can talk to you more about that at a later date. Um, I'm just reading all the questions and seeing what I will definitely write, there are a lot of really good questions, and rather than, um, for, rather than stutter through them, I'm, I'm going to answer as many of them as I can, but I'm also going to send you all a summary of every question and all of the answers so that you all have them and I don't leave anybody out. Um, Jody Jarvis, is the matching grant only for one year, or can you propose something that spans two to three years to support sustainability and reach desired impact? Jody, we are going to um, – I'm going to take that question because I'd like to flesh out that answer a little bit more. Um, can, Allison, can the target population be one of the ones you mentioned – for example, just teens or children of intermarried families. Yes, um, we're looking at any of those. Um, we're looking to engage people from intermarried families as well as the couples themselves. So however you define that, that works for your organization um, is good. Um, Charmian, how far into the future does ongoing have to go? Um, we're defining ongoing as your organization's ability to continue the program after the funding has finished. So um, your project can be long term, but your funding will only be sent, but your funding will only happen between August 31 and of this year and December 1st of next year. Sheila, re regarding existing donors who may have given general gifts, will the new gift specifically for a new project need to be double their prior gift or just 25k? This is to clarify. Um, if it's a if it's a gift for a new program, it can be $25,000 even if it's an existing donor. If it's if it's not a new program, if the donor has given to that particular initiative before, we're, ask, we're looking for them to double their largest previous gift in the past five years. Um, Sharon Steinbeck, does the program have to be new? No. Um, no, it can be an existing program. Um, 
Jenny O'Reilly, can you review the timeline again? When do you need confirmation from the donors? Here, we're going to, I'm going to put the timeline back up for everybody to answer that question. Um, all gifts have to be in by December 1st, 2016. Um, and your deadline for applications is March 15th of that year. Um, Patricia, our program is 100% intermarried couples. We have over 75 families and 120 students. Our donors do not meet the 25K deadline. Can we still apply? Um, Patty, let's talk offline um, rather than get into the specifics of your specific program. Um, Robin, which campus Hillels have received grants and how are they chosen? Maxine, do you have any information about that? Uh, do you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, can you just uh, repeat the question again? I'm sorry, I missed the end of it. Sure. The question was which campus Hillels have received grants and how were they chosen? Uh, okay. Um, we're, um, I, we can uh, once we know who's on the call, call well, you know, um, we can certainly circulate that information so you can see where the interns are going to be operating. Um, and the decision was made through the internal Hillel process. Uh, the grant was given to them uh, with full ability to choose the campuses that would be most appropriate for this. So um, we weren't involved in making that decision, but we certainly have the information and can pass it on to you. Great, thank you. Um, I'm just looking at some of these questions that I can answer. Melissa, while you're work looking, do you mind if I make two comments? Please, go ahead. Okay, I just, uh, first of all, um, I, and I hope you don't mind me saying this, I, I know a number of people were asking about the JFN membership, mm -hmm. and I, I think, you know, it's very important that we're working in partnership, and part of what we want to do together is to encourage long-term Jewish philanthropy, and, and because JFN is so involved in this, uh, you know, this is being encouraged through the initiative as well as obviously wanting to look at the outcomes. Um, for those of you who aren't aware of it, because I know you know funders are going to ask a question and they'll contact Melissa and talk to her about it. JFN has a, a, a membership that operates on a sliding scale and it, it, it's not onerous, so uh, don't let it be something to turn you off. It's, it's, it's worth asking the question uh, before making assumptions about it. Uh, so, you know, I, I think it's important uh, to be aware of that. And my second point I just wanted to say, in terms of, you know, because people are wondering, is this more for organizations who are really dedicated to this in depth, or is it, you know, for others to start looking at it? For us, the answer is very much both and. We want to encourage organizations that are involved with the full spectrum of a population to get involved with this because that's going to make a big difference as well as those who are specialized in this field. Uh, so, you know, it, it, it's, not, it's not more balanced towards one or the other. It's very much towards both. Maxine, thanks. And I just want to jump in. Um, this is Samantha again. Membership, um, we will write up a little bit of a, a summary in the follow-up information so that you have, as I said earlier, talking points to speak to your donors about membership. But as Maxine just said, it's on a uh, sliding scale. Um, it, it correlates to the donor's annual giving. So uh, for example, um, a donor that's giving away $25,000 on up to $100,000 a year, their membership is a, a, the very low price of $600 per year. So that's just an example. And you know, we can share with you what that sliding scale looks like in our summary, but um, just wanted to, to put that fact out there um, because I know that there were a couple of questions about um, you know, how much membership would cost. Right. Thank you both. I appreciate that you both jumped in and I hope that answered some of your um, some of the questions I'm looking at. Um, rather than read every question individually, I'm just going to restate them at, with my answers, which is um, there is not a benefit to applying earlier except that um, then it's off your plate as long as you have a donor in hand that you can complete the application, 
where you can complete the application. Um, the grants are one time only. Um, um, some of these questions are specific about, um, about particular programs. The match dollars, um, I believe, will be received between, I'm sorry, between um, the, everything needs to be in so we can make matching grant decision or we can disperse the funds after, by December 1st, I believe. So I will double check that and get back to everyone, but that is my, um, that is my um, recollection. Um, and we have um, we have let our JFN membership know about the matching grants initiative, um, but JFN's um, part in this is we are not doing any sort of matchmaking between funders and organizations. Um, that is not our mandate. Um, but if there is overlap, we um, we are doing a number of outreach events for donors. Um, including an event on December 10th in New York City, um, two events on the West Coast in early November, one in LA and one in San Francisco, um, an event on December 3rd in London, potentially one in Israel, and maybe one in the Midwest. So there are many opportunities for membership, for JFN members to um, understand what the matching grant initiative is all about, and then also and other donors to understand the initiative, and then reach out to any organizations that they're involved with to get the ball rolling in that way. Um, so, if no, the rest of the questions um, I'm going to take and answer offline. Um, if nobody has anything else, I wanted to thank you all for joining us. Um, I'm available at any time. My contact information is on the screen. Um, the recording will be sent, a link to the recording will be sent out to you as well as the summary. Please make sure you visit our website, um, also on the screen. I want to thank Maxine and the Genesis Prize Foundation and Samantha for joining us as well. And if you have any other questions, please be in touch.